guys, welcome back to my channel. Drew here from Lone Fox. Today, we have a couple of furniture techniques that I'm going to be trying out on the channel for you guys to see if they work. I have never tried any of these furniture hacks or techniques, but I have seen them trending and circulating across social media lately. So I figured I would try them out, test them myself, give you guys my honest thoughts and opinions in real time as I'm actually working on the projects. As a lot of you know, I have done multiple DIY furniture pieces on my channel, including this bookcase back here. That's all that's in this frame, but I've done a lot. And I think these two techniques can actually come in extremely handy because one of them is actually using an oven cleaner to strip down the finish of wood. So it essentially strips away the finish, the stain, and leaves it more of like a bleached raw wood look in the end. I definitely think it should be considered based off the style of the piece. So I'm going to be looking for that when I go out thrifting in a bit. And the second hack I want to try is actually a DIY painted wood. And I would never ever think in my life I'd ever be able to paint the look of wood onto a piece that isn't wood, but I found a technique using some glaze that is so unique. If you guys know the original tutorial for this, totally leave a comment below. I'd love to credit her, but let's go ahead and dive on in. I actually have to head to the thrift store because I don't even know if I have pieces to work on these projects for. So let's head out, head to the thrift store quickly, and then hopefully we can find some stuff, fingers crossed, that we can work on and test out these DIY hacks. I've already found something that I'm not here for, but look at this lamp. I love it. I pulled it over here to show you guys what it looks like. It has this really big base on the bottom, but I'm more so interested in the fluted top. I mean, I love the lamp altogether. I think it would be a really cute one. It's $29.99, but green this week is half off, so it'd be $15. That did not take long to find some nightstands. Now, I genuinely thought I was not going to find a matching set of nightstands that was interesting, had an antique look to them, and needed to be refinished, but I found just that. And these, you guys, also have the coolest marble top on them. I am just obsessed. These are perfect for Marie's bedroom. We really want to do something new in there. She's had mirrored nightstands for years, so we want to do some wood nightstands or something that just kind of goes with the vibe in there a bit more. And these, honestly, are so cute. I love of them. And I think I have found a perfect piece for us to try the painting technique on, which is this one right here. It's $25, a little bit pricier than I would have wanted to pay, but I'm totally fine with trying it out on this because it seems to have already like an ugly finish to it. Like it's like a painted, chipped like faux wood. Can you see that? I don't even know. It has a very odd finish and I don't want to ruin any of these beautiful wooden furniture pieces by trying to paint over them. So we're going to use this one right here. Uh, if I had a large enough car, I would be taking this coffee table home for sure, you guys. Look at how pretty this is with the little details on it. This would be such the ideal piece to try stripping down with that oven stripper. thrift store and I secured my furniture pieces which I'm very excited about and on the way back I also stopped by the Home Depot just to pick up a couple of items. I'm just gonna go through them quickly. There really is not many supplies you need for both of these projects. The first one I just got a drop cloth to put on the floor. I got the furniture glaze. This is the Rust-Oleum Decorative Glaze in Java Brown. They only have this at Home Depot. I was checking at Lowe's but they didn't have it there. I got some paint that was actually suggested by the woman who did the painted wood technique and this is called rugged tan it's a bare color i will put it on the screen for you guys so you know exactly what it is got it in a semi-gloss finish got two different brands of oven cleaner this is the easy off heavy duty oven and grill cleaner and this one is the simple green heavy duty barbecue cleaner so i was like i'm gonna try both of them out since we're doing a little testing technique video and last but not least just to create some texture i got a whisk broom which you can just find this in the cleaning section and then a couple of these kind of like coarser hair paint brushes that are the more affordable ones and we can get started on this project. I think I'm gonna start with the oven cleaner stripping project.
here are the two nightstands I found at the thrift store. They ended up coming out to just $22 each. As I put these down, I was like, why do these look really pretty on camera? But I swear to you, this wood is that very kind of 90s, just very grainy wood. If you know what I'm talking about, it's just not the prettiest of wood. And when you get it in natural lighting or in your home, it really stands out. It's not a cute wood tone and it's not a cute look. So these are gonna be transformed using the oven cleaner and let's get started. After removing all of the hardware from the piece, I then went in with some painter's tape and just masked off any area that I didn't want the oven cleaner to get on. It is time for our first coat of oven cleaner. I've prepped all of our furniture pieces, removed all of the drawers, and put them on our drop cloth here. I taped off the marble on the top and removed all the hardware as well. So we're gonna do our first coat of oven cleaner and see what happens. I'm a little nervous and I also don't have gloves, so I'm gonna really try to not get it on my hands. I'm gonna start with this one. It's the Easy Off Heavy Duty Oven and Grill Cleaner. This is the one that people seem to use most often. I ended up spraying a generous amount all over the entire nightstand, every area that I wanted the wood to be removed from, and I waited about 20 minutes. So I used this little chisel here and started to kind of scrape after about 20 minutes of our wood sitting, and the finish is coming off. Like, do you see that? So I'm gonna go through, I grabbed this larger, one, I'm not sure if this is gonna be proper. And also, Marie went to the store to grab me some gloves, so I'm just gonna use this for the time being and test it out. But let's see if we could get, oh, it's not coming up as well as the other. Ew, that's sick. I also got this little scrubber brush when I was at Home Depot, so let's see if that will take off even more. Ooh, I think it did, look you guys. I removed the stain and the oven cleaner on this whole side of the piece so far. I don't know if you could tell, but it's slowly starting to dry down. Some of the spots are getting a lot lighter. It has a zero finish on it anymore. It's essentially like a raw wood. This is exactly what it's supposed to be looking like. So, so far this piece is working because I know that some particular varnishes and finishes don't work very well, but this particular piece is taking the oven cleaner really nicely. So I'm gonna continue on. This plastic scraper here was my best friend for the entire process. It did a great job at removing a bulk of the finish and the stain that was kind of on the surface that the cleaner actually ate off. And then I went back in with the brush from Home Depot and just made sure that everything was kind of brushed. It was fully dry and all of the actual kind of residue was removed. As you could see, our furniture is lightning and it is lightning really nicely. There's still some wet spots around here. Um, that's our neighbor's dog. <laughs> and then these are the drawer fronts. I already finished the other one as well, but it's just drying in the garage. I'm gonna move these all over to the garage and then check them out in the morning because I want these to fully dry completely. Then tomorrow we could see if we need to apply a second coat or how they're looking in their current state. Hello everybody, it is the next morning and we have our nightstand nice and stripped with our oven cleaner and let me share with you guys what has occurred. Essentially, it worked. It did work very well. The oven cleaner got all of the finish off of it, also removed a bunch of the stain, but I will say that it was a little bit inconsistent. It almost seems like some areas are still darker than others, some areas are extremely light, and there's an inconsistency in kind of the bleaching, I guess, of the wood or the removal of the stain. However, it did take the finish off of absolutely everything, and I brought one of them into Marie's room this morning. I'll pop up a photo for you guys right here, and I just was not a fan of the wood in that space. 
piece. I think because the gray walls are very cool toned, the wood is just not right in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint these nightstands. I hate painting wood furniture, and I know a lot of people don't like it as well, but I just feel like these will look better painted, and we're gonna get a lot of use out of them. Like, I don't plan on getting rid of these anytime soon. The mirrored ones, however, have gotta go. But I will say that the oven cleaner hack did work, and I'm gonna share with you how they look painted in the space as well. And then we can move on to our second one, which today we are going to be doing the faux white oak painted technique, which is gonna be exciting and a little nerve wracking. So let's get to painting. This right here is our second furniture piece that we are going to be hacking today with the white oak painted technique, which I'm very excited to try out. I got all of my supplies yesterday and I picked this up at the thrift store as well. It was $20. Now they were being very brave. They listed this at 50, but it was on sale for 20, thankfully. It's on wheels, so it's like a rolling cart, but it also is kind of like a nightstand size. So I'm not too sure what it is, but we're gonna be testing out the technique on this piece. It has some doors on the front here, and then it has one drawer at the top as well. We're gonna start by removing the hardware and then priming the piece, and then we can jump into the actual technique. I'm using the Zinsser Shellac Primer, which is really the best primer if you don't wanna do any prep work for a project. So I always use this, it sticks to everything, and then allows your paint to stick to that surface as well. So dehydrated, don't know what to say. Sleeping by my side What did I do last night? Can someone make this headache? But it is fully dried down and we are now going to go on to the next step from following the tutorial by Black Sheep House. She says to use Rugged Tan Bare. I got a semi-gloss finish, which I probably wouldn't have opted for myself if I was just like doing this project. However, it's probably to make the actual glaze apply easier and kind of slide on the semi-gloss finish is what I'm thinking. So I'm gonna go through and apply one full coat of this and I probably will need two just depending on the coverage. Our coat of paint is fully dry. This is our rugged tan color and I applied just one coat of it on because I actually like seeing those lines from the brush and the primer on the underside kind of peeking through. I feel like it kind of adds highlights to our wood texture that we're gonna be creating. But now it's going to be the fun part. So we are gonna actually be using this product here. It's called Transformations Decorative Glaze in Java Brown. So I got this at Home Depot. I also got a couple of these kind of coarser hair brushes, the really affordable ones. This handheld broom, I got it at Home Depot as well. And last but not least, this is the brush I actually used to paint Marie's entire bedroom. If you guys remember, I did the Portola paint, which is kind of like that lime wash finish. I had to paint it by hand with this brush, and I kept it because it was a pricey brush, and I'm going to use it to create some texture as well. So I think we should go ahead and dive in. I'm a little nervous, but this is going to be fun. Let's go ahead and open this up and see what it looks like. Definitely has like a thinner consistency than paint, but a little bit like thicker than a stain, I'd say, somewhere in the middle. She literally just went in and started to apply kind of some of it onto the piece. I'm not sure how much I'm supposed to use. I think she used like a pretty generous amount. Kind of like that. <laughs> I don't know if I'm doing this right. Then you take your large brush, and we're gonna go in and start trying to create the texture. Okay, you guys, this is honestly looking really great so far. And I'm gonna go in with this uh, this piece here and just try to add a little bit more of like a naturally kind of like wood grain texture so it doesn't look super uniform. And the nice thing is with the glaze is you have a little bit of time for it to actually dry. So you get a little bit of working time with the product. So something I'm noticing is I don't like how the bottom is darker. I kinda wanna blend that out a little bit more. That looks perfect! Are you kidding me with this right now? That is absolutely insane! Look how much that looks like wood, you guys! I am genuinely shocked right now. It's truly perfect. I'm gonna pull it out like this. Like, look at that finish. That looks like legitimate wood. And I'm gonna continue the process. It's actually extremely easy to do as well. This door here only took me maybe three minutes from start to finish.
currently in a state of shock about how this is turning out. I cannot believe this is looking so much like wood. I've done the sides, the front, the drawer, and I also did this side as well. All that's left is the top, and then we are good. I don't know what those are, some fingerprints. I'm gonna have to get those off. Uh, but let's go ahead and paint the top now, and then we're gonna apply our sealer once it is dry. I finished painting our piece, and it looks exactly like wood it is crazy but i'm gonna go ahead and let it dry overnight because it does say that it needs quite a while to dry and then tomorrow we can apply our clear coat add our hardware and check out both of our final pieces the nightstands and this little nightstand rolling cart situation i'll style them up for you guys and i'm just really excited both of them turned out really great so i'll catch you guys in the morning Good morning, everybody. Look at our wood finish so far. It is looking so good. It has fully dried overnight. Now, as you can see, there's a little bit of a very shiny sheen on the surface, which kind of makes it look highlighted in some spots. But I'm hoping that we're going to fix that once we add our polyacrylic matte coat on it. But this is looking so great so far. Now, there is an additional step that she actually did with hers, which was using kind of like a brush like this, which is one of those coarser brushes, and a little bit of a yellow toned paint to just go in and kind of add some imperfections in the wood so I'm gonna go ahead and do that just because I want to follow her technique hundred percent then we're gonna go in and add our polyacrylic matte top coat to seal the entire piece It's a little hard to tell what the yellow adds to the piece, but I wanted to follow the technique properly, and I think it actually did add a little bit more character to the wood and just overall give it a little bit more interest and just kind of make it seem a little bit more like a realistic wood piece. I went ahead and applied our clear coat to the piece. I let the glaze dry overnight and it dried fully. This morning I applied our clear coat and brought it upstairs into my studio space just to style it because I don't have a particular use for this piece. I just more so wanted to test the technique for you guys. So I wanted to find something at the thrift store that was kind of dingy and I just felt like somebody wouldn't have purchased. That way I could test out the technique and I will say that it worked incredibly well. However, for this particular item, I'm not sure if this is a perfect piece for the technique just because it has some trim work on the top and there are some like rounded edges which are kind of hard to get that grain work very properly done so I will say if you are doing this technique I would go ahead and kind of study your piece first and think about how the actual grain if it was made of real wood would work on the piece and that's what I did however it was a little tricky to get the grain work perfect on the top but honestly if I was to ask anybody this looks like real white oak which is absolutely insane and I'm going to share it with you guys right now up today's video I hope that you guys enjoyed this one I wanted to do a little bit more of a vloggy style and more so testing a couple of techniques I've really been wanting to try out but I didn't want to wait until I needed something so I just wanted to try them out with you share the techniques maybe it can give you guys some pointers for a furniture flip you're doing or whatever it might be and I hope that you did enjoy this video so if you did make sure to give it a big thumbs up and leave a comment down below letting me know which technique you liked the best and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, post new content every single week here on Lone Fox, and you can find me over on Instagram and TikTok, and it's just Lone Fox Home, where I post a lot more content as well. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye, everybody. Bye.